Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing very well. My name is Meg Moonbeam, and welcome to our first Astro Deep Dive show here on the Beyond Mystic YouTube, Rumble, and X channels. I'm very excited to be here with you all today. Uh, we're going to be talking about going deep dive, <laughs> deep diving into this Jupiter Uranus conjunction that we have happening this month of April 2024, and which will be exact on April 20th, 2024. So this is a really, really powerful and special astrological aspect that I'm very excited to dive deep with you all on. And in today's show, I'm going to be talking about what this conjunction means for the whole collective of humanity and Mother Earth. And I'm also going to talk about what it means for each of the 12 sun, moon and rising signs. So this is going to be fun because we're not just going to talk about, you know, what it means in general, but we'll do you know, talking about for each of the sun, moon, rising signs, what it entails, which I know everybody really loves <laughs> when we do the 12 sign readings. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of frog in my throat. Uh, before we get started, just want to remind you guys, please remember to like, share and subscribe to the Beyond Mystic YouTube as well as Rumble channel. And also, I do offer personal astrology consultations that are available over at consultations.beyondmystic.net. They're available at the link in the description box of this video. So if you'd like to do a deep dive into your personal astrology with me, I absolutely love doing personal readings. And I'm currently offering one hour personal forecasts looking at your year ahead with the astrological transits. Also, one hour solar return readings, which is specializing on your birthday chart that will start on your next birthday and what that entails for the year ahead. And also, one hour birth chart analysis and intuitive astrology readings. So, diving deep into the magic and mystery of your birth chart and why you are here. So, if you'd like to check that out, that's over at consultations.beyondmystic.net. But today we're going to be focusing on this very anticipated Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which is really the biggest conjunction of the year in 2024 by far, and probably the coolest and most interesting and biggest effect astrological aspect that we have of 2024. So what I actually want to start off with you guys is going back in time, if you will, <laughs> which let me just do a little recap here. So I'm sure many of you guys know that Jupiter is the planet in astrology that rules our beliefs, spiritual growth, expansion, luck, abundance, and opportunities and higher wisdom. And Uranus is the planet that rules the age of Aquarius, the future, innovation, invention, weirdness, shocks and surprises, science and technology, among many other things. So we're having these two planets, Jupiter and Uranus, exactly conjunct on April 20th, but they are still, rather, they are conjunct right now. Okay, as I'm filming this video on Thursday, April 11th, we've got... Uh, Oh, this is not the correct chart. Just one moment, you guys. On Thursday, April 11th, we've got Jupiter and Uranus are three degrees apart. And actually, this is the chart for April 20th. So sorry, you guys, I'm having a Mercury retrograde moment. So they are three degrees apart as I'm filming this video, but will be exactly conjunct on April 20th. So we're in the influence of this actually for all of April. It's going to be very, very strong as we get closer to the 20th. And we'll also be in, in the influence of it going into May. And we were in the influence of it in February as well. So I'd like to start by taking a little travel back in time. Okay. And why that is, is, well, I'm the kind of astrologer that I'm a Scorpio astrologer. So I love to weave my intuitive insights, my Scorpio intuitive insights, but I also love to dive deep and investigate. And that means with astrology, sometimes looking at what happened the last time we had a certain astrological transit or aspect. So what's really interesting is Jupiter and Uranus 
only conjunct every 14 years. So this is not something that happens very often. And we have not had Jupiter Uranus conjunct in um, Taurus since 1941. So we're going to travel back in time to May 7th, 1941. And then we're going to get into after we go back in time, <laughs> after we time travel to 1941, and then to 1858, the last two times we've had this conjunction in Taurus, then we're going to talk about what this means for right now. Okay, but first, we need to review the astrology look back because history repeats itself and time is cyclical and we can go back to see the last time that this happened what was going on and what this may mean for right now okay so the last time we had jupiter and uranus conjunct in taurus was 1941 exact on may 7th 1941 so we haven't had jupiter and uranus exactly conjunct since May 7th, 1941. And Digibean, hi Digibean in the comments, you say about six months before Pearl Harbor, you read my mind and you read my notes because yes, this was around the time frame of Pearl Harbor among many other very important historical uh, events as we're gonna get into. So thank you Digibean for that very much. So not only did we have Jupiter and Uranus conjunct, at that time, like we're having now, but also Jupiter and Uranus were exactly conjunct the demon fixed star, the most evil, darkest fixed star in astrology called Algol. Okay. Now I am going to do another astro deep dive, I believe in two weeks, specializing on Algol and Uranus being conjunct, which is going to be in July, specifically July 15th and 16th of this year. Okay. But good news is, you guys, we will not have what we had in 1941, which is Jupiter and Uranus conjunct with Algol, exact. So in 1941, Algol was at 25 degrees of Taurus from our Earth's perspective. The fixed stars are stars that are very far away from the Earth, and they actually move in the um, sidereal astrology every 80 years or so. So as of right now, Algol is located at 26 degrees of Taurus. And really good news is we will not have Jupiter, Uranus, Algol all exactly conjunct this year um, or within our lifetime. So this, it's not typically a negative aspect, okay, but it was a very unique situation in 1941 when Jupiter and Uranus happened to be conjunct, not just each other, but that demon fixed star of Algol, which for those of you who don't know, Algol uh, represents basically evil <laughs> darkness, people getting their heads chopped off, um, explosions, bombs, torture, suicide, death, murder, a lot of really, really heavy things, okay, which if we look back at 1941, there was a lot of death ruled by Algol going on, there was a lot of bombs, air raids, explosions, things being blown up, people losing their heads, people getting their heads cut off. So I hate to be uh, so uh, grotesque here, you guys, but just telling you reading the astrology, that I want to be very clear. I don't, this Jupiter Uranus conjunction that we're having this year is not going to be anything like what it was the last time because it was exactly conjunct algal, which is literally one of the darkest, most negative things in astrology. Okay. So very, very intense stuff. And, but what we do have the same, in my personal opinion, is we are in a war yet again. So, you know, 1941 was World War II. As I'm filming this video, we are in 2024. And yes, there are wars going on over the world, but some people would say there isn't a world war. I would disagree with that. I believe that we are in a world war and this is a more spiritual psychological war. So I think we're already in one. <laughs> it's just a little bit, it's not as, you know, boots on the ground all over the world as it was in World War II. But Uranus in Taurus is actually the most unstable position 
for Uranus. So in Western astrology, we say that Uranus is at his fall position in Taurus. So whenever we have Uranus and Taurus, us astrologers are going, okay, what the heck is going to be going on here? Because this is when we have, you know, very unstable times on the planet, right? Like we've been having since 2018, since Uranus entered this transit in Taurus. And we will have Uranus and Taurus started in 2018. And it will be until I believe February 2026, if I'm not mistaken in 2026. So not that much longer, we can look forward to when Uranus is going to move into Gemini in just less than two years. So that will help to bring more stability on the planet. And why Uranus is at fall in the sign of Taurus is because Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius and the ruler of the age of Aquarius and the future and innovation and inspiration and weirdness and shocks and surprises. And Taurus is the sign that rules Mother Earth, nature, stability, the comforts of life. So we've got Uranus, the most unstable planet currently in Taurus, the most stable sign that rules nature and Mother Earth and humanity and the animals. Uh, so it's a very turbulent transit, but having Jupiter conjunct Uranus, as I'm going to talk about for us currently in the collective, I think is overall going to be a very, very positive thing. And I'm going to get into why we do not have Algol exactly conjunct this conjunction. So thank God that was why in 1941, it was complete instability with Uranus at fall in Taurus, exactly conjunct Algol exactly conjunct Jupiter, which Jupiter is the planet of expansion and expands whatever he's touching, good or bad. So that's important to be aware of. Okay. So what happened last time Uranus and Jupiter were conjunct in Taurus? World War II. Okay. Also what happened, which I thought was really interesting to note, and I've brought up this Wikipedia page here, was July 1st, 1941, commercial television is authorized by the Federal Communications Commission in the United States of America. So Uranus is the planet that rules technology, computers, TVs, screens, okay, any kind of innovations in technology. And July 1st, 1941, just a few months after that exact conjunction the last time, basically commercials started to be invented, okay? And TV, commercial television, so the television becoming more a part of day-to-day -day life, which what is the television, you guys? tell lie vision tell lie vision <laughs> so you know there's a lot of dark art stuff going on with a lot of the words that um we use in the english language and tell lie visions right yes funky wanderer thank you very much for spelling that out there televisions are nice because we get to watch you know some shows and movies and concerts that are enjoyable but they are programming machines that really started to program the public the last time Uranus and Jupiter were conjunct, right after that exact conjunction, commercials started, right? Really heavy brainwashing through the TV started. So I feel like, hi, Carla, nice to see you. Um, I feel like there's going to be a shift because everything repeats itself and everything is connected and cyclical. There will be a shift with televisions, commercials, TV programming. We could see the death of uh, mainstream media this year. Okay. I know that may sound really, really intense and may seem like no, Meg, that's not going to happen. You know, it's going to take some time for mainstream media to completely fall. But what we see is very shortly after these Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions throughout history, they bring major innovations, disruptions, and changes in technology. So I think if we were to do a review, which I would love to do on this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction by the end of the year, after we've experienced you know, um, six months of its influence on the collective, I think TVs, television, mainstream media could look completely different um, commercials 
can look completely different as well. There's gonna be major shifts with television and TV programming. And it's important to note as well that this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, I think is gonna be more positive for the collective of humanity rather than the last one in World War II because we don't have Al Gol exactly conjunct the conjunction and we've got Pluto currently in Aquarius. And so we're entering that age of Aquarius in the sidereal astrology, plus Pluto is in Aquarius, and Uranus is the planetary ruler of Pluto. Sorry, Uranus is the planetary ruler of Aquarius. So what is Aquarius? Freedom of the collective brotherhood and sisterhood of humanity. So I'm seeing this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is a very different, more empowering freedom oriented influence than the last time we had it, which was, I think, way more chaotic. Also, what happened in 1941, like one of you said earlier, I'm sorry, I forget your name in the chat, but I did bring your comment up that we had uh, Pearl Harbor in 1941. So, you know, Uranus and Taurus, one of the downsides, which I hate to say it, you guys, but I just have to say as an astrologer, is it's the most unstable position for Mother Earth and for nature. And there can be, you know, very big earth shifts and changes, natural disasters, um, even accidents with very big machines or sometimes intentional attacks or accidents as well. So just one of those things to be aware of is kind of one of the shadow aspects of this. So last time we had Jupiter Uranus conjunct was World War II, 1941. And let's go back even further to the second last time we had a Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And I'll bring up the chart for that, which was 1858. And to be exact, May 23rd, 1858. Okay. And anybody have any idea what was going on around that time? in the mid uh, 1800s. If anybody has an, any idea, please put it in the comments in the live chat or the comments below. I know it's a very, very long time ago, but there was some very interesting things going on there as well, okay? Two things that I think are the most interesting about this time period, and of course it gets harder to, you know, um, go back <laughs> to look at the exact history as we go farther back. Um, but there were some very interesting things and you guys got it. You guys got one of the things three years before civil war, right? So this started now the civil war wasn't Uranus and Taurus. It was when Uranus was in um, Aries, sorry, Gemini, but yes, three years before. So this was a little bit of a precursor to it, which is very, very interesting. Something else that was going on during this Uranus in Taurus transit was the start of the world fairs, okay? Which, have any of you guys ever heard about the world fairs before? If you have not, this is a very, very trippy, deep, rabbit hole. Okay. So if you have never heard about the world fairs and the whole world fair conspiracy, that is a whole rabbit hole that is going to really, really blow your mind. Mary Grace. Hi, Mary Grace says, yes, yes. The world fairs connected to Tartaria. Okay. So what's interesting is the second last time we had Uranus and Taurus uh, started in 1851. And that was the year that the world fairs started out of nowhere, okay? And what we know in modern day society, what we are programmed to believe is that the world fairs, all of a sudden we just started having these world fairs where they built these whole cities that are really, really supposedly new and extravagant and they would only have it around for a very short period of time and then knock it all down, <laughs> you know? And these world fairs were told in modern day life that they were times when, you know, um, inventors and uh, forward thinking people would bring new technologies, new technologies to the public, and scientism really started to be put on the public. Now, this is a whole other rabbit hole, Tartaria and the world fairs. But if you look at this, this is very interesting, because as I've been talking about, Uranus is at fall 
in Taurus. So the second time, last time we had Uranus in Taurus, there was this, you know, explosion of the world fairs. And I do believe in Tartaria. And I do believe that those buildings in the world fair, <laughs> me personally, I think that those were ancient buildings that then got destroyed. So part of our history got destroyed while Uranus was in that fall position the second last time. So with Uranus in Taurus again now and Jupiter conjunct Uranus with Pluto in Aquarius, it's far more empowering. I want to be very clear and I hope that I'm making sense with this, you guys. It's far more empowering of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction this month and this year than it was in 1941 and in 1858, okay? Because we've got that Pluto and Aquarius, which is really, really positive for the people. So I could see this year something coming out about the world fairs and the truth behind that as well. That's definitely something that I want to be looking more into. Tartaria, that could become more of a mainstream thing. There could be something discovered about the World Fairs or Tartaria that becomes completely undeniable. And, you know, the normie public kind of has to um, take it in, right, <laughs> as truth or fact. So really trippy stuff, the World Fairs. Also, another interesting thing that was going on in the mid-1800s, the second last time we had Uranus and Jupiter conjunct in Taurus, or that Uranus and Taurus transit, is Abraham Lincoln in 1858 accepted the Republican nomination and then shortly thereafter became the president of the United States, okay? And don't know if you guys know, but I'm not an expert on this. I actually want to give a shout out to um, my friend Luke, Red Pill Rooster. You can find him on TikTok, Red Pill Rooster. He specializes in the Corporation of the United States of America and talking about that in his content. And it's interesting that Abraham Lincoln, I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, was the president when he he basically made helped to make the USA into a corporation okay so don't know if you probably some of you guys have heard about that before that the USA is actually a corporation as of right now and everybody is everyone who is an american citizen is a um is their own corporation or company am i saying that you guys right so I think that's going to start to come out even more, the truth behind that over the course of this year, because we had that happen in the last Uranus in Taurus transit. So there's going to be a lot of things revealed this month and throughout the rest of the year about the truth of the world, the truth of humanity, the truth of our history, right? Because Taurus, Uranus and Jupiter conjunct in Taurus is about the earth, nature, historical texts, historical libraries, documents, earth history. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be really interesting to see what comes up with that. So that's kind of what I wanted to share about the last couple times that we've had Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus. And it's important for us to look back and see the parallels that we have going on right now. But now we've got uh this exact conjunction is going to be happening on April 20th, 2024. And this time Jupiter and Uranus will be conjunct at 21 degrees of Taurus. They will not be in a close uh, conjunction to Algol where that's going to be a very big influence. We will have Algol exactly conjunct Uranus in the summer, which I'll talk about in the next Astro Deep Dive. Okay. But overall for us now, this is a major consciousness expanding aspect. And I see this version, as I said, of the conjunction far more positive than the last two times because we have Pluto in Aquarius and Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Um, I feel like for the whole collective, the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction in Taurus is a sudden and even shocking jump into the future regarding the Taurus ruled areas of life, which Taurus in astrology rules money, the financial system, food, comforts and stability, mother earth, music, the enjoyments of life, 
And overall, as I said, this is a very positive transit where we're upgrading those different areas of life. And we're breaking stagnation from being stuck in, you know, the old world, the old cabal, dark arts way of doing things, right? So things I believe will never be the same and we are leaving an old world behind and we are welcoming in a new world and new ways of doing things. And it's interesting that I was doing a astrology consultation earlier today and I was bringing up the concept of earth ships, which I'm sure some of you guys have heard of before. They're these um, homes that are off grid, that are made of completely natural materials, <laughs> you know, Taurus rules, natural materials, the earth, Uranus is innovation, invention, like-minded community, Aquarian living. So I feel like the whole earthship movement or the whole, you know, like-minded community movement, making homes out of natural resources will become even greater. Okay, so uh, this is an interesting thing to look into if you've never heard about it before, the earth ships. Uh, they're made out of, as I said, natural resources, tires, and they're homes that you can grow food in. They heat themselves, they cool themselves down, they're totally off grid. So it's things like the earth ships and even newer uh, innovations for humanity like that to get us more connected to Mother Earth are going to be coming up, which is really, really cool. And we are becoming more open as a collective with this conjunction. People are waking up because Uranus is a planet that rules higher consciousness. Jupiter expands whatever it's touching. And a lot of people are waking up and going to want to be a part of, you know, uh, Aquarian living, humanity, off-grid, natural living, taking back our empowerment from where we've given away, where we've lost our connection to the earth, right? And what's interesting too is Jupiter and Uranus are both planets that are very much about freedom. So I see this as, you know, with this conjunction, we could see somewhere in the world a huge protest or different series of protests kicking off somewhere. And if I had to make a guess about where that would be, I would guess that that would be somewhere in Europe, okay? Which I know that at the moment we do have the farmers protest going on, which is totally, um, you know, a Uranus and Taurus thing already because Uranus rules protest, Taurus rules farmers. But there could be something more unexpected, something out of the blue coming up for Europe that they may start protesting. And why I'm saying Europe in particular is because the chart, the astrology chart of the European Union, which most of the European countries fall under, not all of them, but a lot of them are under that kind of rule governments influence of the European Union. Uh, in the European Union chart, this chart has its moon at 24 degrees of Taurus. Now this Jupiter Uranus conjunction will be at 21 degrees of Taurus. And in charts of countries or organizations, the moon in astrology represents the people. Okay. So with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction conjunct the moon of the European Union, this is the people rising up. This could be a huge revolution that maybe we will literally see on April 20th or literally any day now, the month of April, or throughout the year coming up of 2024. Because something else I don't know if I mentioned with these Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions is they happen exactly on a day, but then their influence can kick in maybe a month later, two months later, three months later. So we're going to be seeing, I think, massive revolution and protests in Europe, probably in regards to, of course, we have the farmers already going on, the farmers protest, but I think this will also be in relation to the central bank digital currencies, the financial changes that the European Union is trying to do to Europe, um, you know, trying to have a centralized money system, and I definitely see Europe fighting back for sure. 
And I've mentioned before in some of my other content that, you know, you look at the chart of the European Union and it's a sun in Scorpio at a Scorpio degree with the two rulers of Scorpio, Mars and Pluto, exactly conjunct in Scorpio. With the Mars Kazemi that we had in November 2023 conjunct the Mars Pluto conjunction. So, in my personal astrological opinion, the European Union is going to fall either this year or next year. And when I say that, I don't mean Europe is going to fall, I mean the dark arts system of the European Union is going to fall and it's going to be uh, very, very dramatic and intense probably because that's a whole lot of Scorpio going on. So if you're in Europe, I'm not saying this to be fear-based, I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart out of love, okay? It would be very smart for you to have, um, I think, extra water, food, supplies, at this time, because we're seeing things being very, very potentially unstable and disruptive in Europe for the upcoming year ahead, which I actually look at that as a good thing. And we don't have to be scared of that if we're prepared, because certain changes need to take place. Okay, and I just have to be careful exactly what I'm saying here with the details, you guys, because we are simulcasting on um, YouTube and Rumble. Okay, and I'm just going to take a sip of my water. Okay. Uh, Mary Grace says, so no Italy this summer for me. Okay, so I would say if you're feeling to travel to Europe, which I will be traveling to Europe this summer, just follow your inner guidance, okay? It doesn't mean you can't travel to Europe. It just means there will be certain parts of Europe um, over the course of the next year where there will be major revolution, ma major protests, um, potential, you know, um, power grids being shut down because that's something that we see when big protests happen is the government will shut down the power to get people to stop calling and texting each other. So just, you know, let's follow our inner guidance, you guys. And if we're feeling really called to go somewhere, that's okay. We can still go somewhere um, if you're feeling to travel. Okay. Um, yeah, also this Jupiter Uranus conjunction is happening at 21 degrees, which is a Sagittarius degree and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So I'm seeing this overall, even though it is going to bring disruption, revolution, protests, major awakening of the people, it's a good thing. It's something that's good. It's positive, it's supportive, and it's bringing blessings. Jupiter is the planet of blessings. And 21 degrees, a Jupiter degree, is positivity, luck, and blessings, right? And also, Jupiter rules higher education. So I could see over the course of you know the next few months, there could be major developments in higher education, in colleges and universities that are more forward-thinking. Uh, there can also be, because Jupiter rules foreign travel, a trend or new wave of travel that is totally different than what people have done before. And we can see major advancement in the travel field. So there may be around the time of this exact conjunction or, uh, you know, over the course of the rest of the year, all of a sudden it could be really trendy to travel to somewhere that before we might have considered really weird or very exotic. There could be a new travel destination that um, gets found that all of a sudden everybody wants to go to. <laughs> you know, so that can relate to travel as well with Jupiter there. But this conjunction very much has to do with the financial system as it's in the sign of Taurus with the food supply also ruled by Taurus. So this is bringing big financial changes for the whole collective. And we are being re-inspired to invest in things that actually have realistic value and stability, ruled by Taurus. So, you know, Taurus, I'm not a financial expert, you guys, but uh, Taurus rules metals, precious metals, silver, gold, and crystals. And Jupiter expands whatever it's in. Uranus also can expand whatever it's in. So I'm seeing precious metals becoming way more valuable, 
with this conjunction and over the course of the next few months as well. Also crystals as well, anything valuable, anything that is actually of value from the earth. Okay, you guys. And since Uranus rules cryptocurrency and Uranus is in the sign of Taurus that rules money, we are going to see a big push for CBDCs from the dark art system. But as I said, with Pluto being an Aquarius, there will be major, major uh, revolting against that. We may see certain parts of the world kind of accept that, but there will definitely be uh, a lot of parts of the world that will not accept that. And I don't see CBDCs as an astrologer lasting in the long term in the places where they may get in, um, implemented first. Also, Uranus is the planet that rules astrology. So with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, there could be a very big astrological discovery or a change in some kind of astrological system. And it is highlighted as well, you know, what is the earth? Taurus rules the earth. What exactly are we on? You know, what is going on with the dimensions as well? There could be big quantum physics discoveries in the influence of this conjunction. I think free energy is also going to become bigger and bigger uh, with this conjunction, maybe even starting this month, but definitely throughout the rest of the year, I think free energy will become an even bigger thing that's being talked about, which if you guys haven't checked out, let me actually bring this up here. Uh, what was it? A few months ago, Dr. Stephen Greer put out this documentary. I'm just going to bring it up here to show you guys. Really good documentary on free energy. Did you guys see that? What was it called? Oh my God, YouTube is hiding it. Okay, I'm typing into YouTube, Stephen Greer free energy documentary, and it's not coming up at all. Wow. So they are shadow banning that big time. I'm just trying to bring it up because I forget the name of it, you guys. I'm going to try to go to Stephen Greer's website, which, okay, that is freaking crazy. If you try to go, if you try to find Stephen Greer's website, it doesn't even come up <laughs> on Google. Oh my God, what the heck? Does anybody in the chat know what his website is called or what that documentary is called that I'm talking about? Let me see here if you guys know. Nope. Okay, well, you can find Stephen Greer on social media. And I'm sure if you go onto his social media, um, he will have a link in his bio that will bring you to his website, which I can't find because it's being shadow banned. And, um, oh, somebody just brought his website here. Let me copy and paste that. Oh, I can't copy and paste that. Sorry, guys. You guys are saying it's called Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Okay, so I think that's what the documentary is called. It's called Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Thank you guys for saying that. And it's all about free energy and how that's being hidden from us and how it's already there. And this is the future. Free energy is the future. And it's such a cool, um, exciting documentary and movement. So I'm just bringing this up because I see the free energy movement becoming even bigger and greater and more popular with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction as well. Okay. Um, yeah, health wise, in terms of health, you know, <laughs> Uranus is the planet that rules our nervous system and energy and electricity. And with Jupiter conjunct Uranus, this can manifest for different people in different ways. Some of us may be feeling totally great <laughs> and energized. And others of us that perhaps have a lot of Aquarius in our astrology or one of the fixed signs, those are the signs that will be affected the most. The Tauruses, Scorpios, Leos, and Aquarius is the fixed signs. Um, those signs may be feeling maybe a little bit more hyper than usual, anxious than usual, hypertension than usual, because Uranus in medical astrology rules 
the nervous system. So as we get closer to this exact conjunction on April 20th and throughout the month, if you're feeling like the electric circuitry in your body and you're feeling a lot of energy, just know that in the medical astrology, this conjunction can make us feel more of those things. You're not going crazy. So a really good remedy for that would be to do extra grounding, earthing, getting barefoot outside, doing things that calm the nervous system, okay? Which for me, getting barefoot outside, getting out into nature, totally calms my nervous system as well as, you know, sound healing. I love going to sound baths. That calms my nervous system as well. So those are some really good remedies for that. So yeah, I think I've said everything I wanted to say for the collective for now with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And we're going to get into my predictions for each of the 12 signs. But before we do, I want to pull some cards for us as a collective on what is our guidance from the universe, from all that supports us for our highest good about this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. What do we need to know about it? How can we navigate this? Okay, and I'm going to pull some tarot cards. And I'm also going to pull from one of my favorite decks that I don't usually bring. But I felt to take this one out today. This is one of my favorites. Divine Circus Oracle Cards. Okay. And I picked the Divine Circus because Uranus is a little bit of a circus, wonky, <laughs> unstable energy. And these are some very fun and different cards. So I'm going to ask what's our divine circus message for the collective for this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Hmm. Okay, I've never pulled this one before. We've got steampunk priestess. <laughs> These cards are a little bit weird, I told you guys. So I'm going to open up the book because I've never pulled that one before. I don't know what it's all about. Let's see what we get here. This is for all of us for this Jupiter Uranus conjunction for the whole collective. Steampunk priestess. One, two, three. Trust in what you see. <laughs> Four, five, six. The truths behind the tricks. Seven, eight, nine. Clarity divine. You shall see what you need to see at the perfect moment it shall be. Appearances can deceive, yet when the time is right, incisive intuition slices through the illusion and the truth hits you between the eyes. That is the perception of reality behind the illusion. You know it when you experience it and you know that you have to trust in what you see. So give yourself permission to acknowledge and accept the power of those insights. Don't talk yourself out of the truth. Intuition might only last for a second, and yet it can change the way you look at things forever, setting you a more authentic course and allowing for things, allowing for changes to take place that you might have previously believed were impossible. The steampunk priestess comes to you when there is more to something or someone than initially meets the eye. This is very mysterious. You might need to look closer to understand what is happening or to trust in what you are already perceiving. She reminds you to trust your insight, no matter how startling, surprising, or shocking that intuitive hit may be. Okay, this is very, very interesting. And I feel like her third eye is being very highlighted there. And the tarot card that we got as well, is the hanged man reversed, okay, with the steampunk priestess. And I feel like both of these are about our perspectives, okay? The hanged man in the tarot is all about needing to change your perspective. He goes in that, you know, really uh, funny upside down pose to change his perspective, right? And see, be open to doing things in a different way, right? And Uranus, as we've talked about, is the planet of the future, open-mindedness, doing things in a different way, forward thinking, innovation, and invention. So it's like not everything 
is as it seems. And even those, and I'm feeling spirit say, for even those of us that are in the consciousness truther movement, there's even some things to us that haven't been revealed yet, or we don't have the clarity around yet. And I'm hearing spirits say, be patient. The clarity is going to come. Okay. And one way that can help us support us during this conjunction is to actually do like yoga, go into different kind of postures to help us be open to different perspectives. And our perspective is perspectives on things are likely to change in certain areas. Okay. And I feel like this is very creative energy as well. So don't, and I've been saying this in the, all the videos of the past week as well, kind of what the steampunk priestess card is saying, like, don't just believe in something because the news says it, or someone you like says it, or everybody's saying it, not everything is as it seems at the moment. And I'm telling you guys, this Uranus and Taurus transit and astrology is one of the most unstable things we can possibly have, where we can feel a lack of clarity also with Neptune and Pisces, where we can feel like, when is the comfort going to come? When is the stability going to come? It is going to come. But what I'm hearing Spirit say is part of the blessing of when we have Uranus at fall in Taurus is it's so unstable that it forces our perspective to change. Does that make sense? You guys, it forces us out of stability to change the pace, to change our perspective, to change the way that we're doing things. So this is totally new energy coming in with this conjunction. And I'm just feeling intuitively, you know, we've just had that total solar eclipse in Aries this past Monday as I'm filming this video. And now this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, I mean, things will never be the same after April. We are literally stepping into the future. There are big inventions and innovations that are going to be coming forward. And we are up leveling big time, big time, big time. And one of you said, is that David Bowie behind you? Yes, that's <laughs> my David Bowie <laughs> poster there. Um, yeah, David Bowie is very Aquarian, Uranian in nature as well. So very, very cool. Okay, hope that message resonated with you guys. And I'm just going to take a little bit of my frankincense oil to help ground me because I'm feeling the high vibrations as we're talking about this conjunction. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to do little mini reading predictions for each of the 12 signs for this Uranus Jupiter conjunction. And I'm going to go through each of the 12 signs and you're welcome to listen to <laughs> Yes, Dizzy Bean, Gigi Bean, Cha Cha Changes. That's one of David Bowie's songs, Being Open to Change. Uh, Linda says, Sorry if we are zapping you, Meg. No, you guys are not zapping me at all. I just get very, um, I get a little bit lightheaded when I start to channel the energy. And that's why I'm. I'm a crazy Taurus rising over here and I've got all my oils with me <laughs> to help me ground. <laughs> so it's all good. Okay, so I invite you guys to listen to your sun, moon and rising signs, okay, for how this Jupiter Uranus conjunction is going to activate and work with each of us on April 20th for this month of April and also as an in, in, in influence for the whole rest of the year. Okay, and we're going to start with the Aries. Where's my Aries chart? Here's my Aries chart. Okay, so we're going to start with Aries, and I'm just going to take a sip of my water here. One sec. I've been so thirsty ever since the eclipse. I don't know about you guys, but I'm needing like a lot of water at the moment. Okay, anyways, for the Aries, Sun, Moon, and Risings, 
Aries, you are having the Jupiter Uranus conjunction happen in your second house. And this is very cool because the second house is the Taurus ruled areas of life. And, you know, this conjunction is happening in the sign of Taurus. So you are having shocking and inspiring new values and self-worth and also income streams. New income streams can be coming into your life. There can be income streams coming in for you that seem totally unexpected and out of the ordinary for you during this time and over the next couple months and throughout the year. There could be money or material possessions coming out of nowhere with Jupiter and Uranus conjunct in your second house. Also, as Uranus rules technology, it is a good time to start utilizing more Aries, computers, new technology, social media, websites, and online business into your career if possible. As the second house rules stability, the stability in your life is going through a big shift. What you value and what you consider to be stability is going through an upgrade and a shift. Also, having Jupiter transit over your second house is generally very positive for finances in general. You just want to be mindful of overspending at this time. So it's very much Aries about your values, your income, your material possessions, and your stabilities and comforts of life. And I'm wishing you all a very happy Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, all the Aries, Sun, Moon, and Risings. Sending you guys lots and lots of love. Okay, and now we move to my fellow Tauruses. I am a Taurus rising, and shout out to all my fellow Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. So Tauruses, this is affecting us the most because this Uranus-Jupiter conjunction is happening in the sign of Taurus. So Tauruses, you have had Uranus in Taurus since 2018, and you and the fixed signs are feeling this transit the most. This is sudden life changes, innovations, and higher consciousness shifts since 2018 and until 2026 as Uranus is transiting over your first house. This conjunction is happening in your first house and the first house in astrology represents our foundations, self, how we're physically seen as well as our body. So Taurus is you are receiving a huge activation. This is also very sudden positive life changes that can be coming up for you. And it's likely that your physical appearance can be going through a drastic change. You guys are stepping into greater levels of freedom, independence, rebelliousness, creativity, and ingenuity. And around the time of this conjunction, so which is March, April, and May, but also throughout the whole rest of the year, you can have sudden life changes regarding yourself, how you're seen, also in the Taurus ruled areas of life, like your comfort zone, finances, resources, and enjoyments, a lot of you Tauruses will be suddenly, Uranus rules sudden and unexpected, will be suddenly making more money. And in many of, for many of you, in new Aquarian types of ways. Jupiter in the first house also usually is a very lucky time. So it brings new opportunities for abundance, travel, spiritual growth, and overall positive expansion of self. Taurus is this is a good year to take risks, believe in yourself, just be aware at this time of your physical health and being overly impulsive or indulging. Okay, so hope that resonates with you Tauruses. And now we're going to move to the Geminis. And I forgot to mention earlier, you guys, that the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, are going to be most affected by this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, as well as the Sagittarius's and Pisces ruled by Jupiter, and the Aquarians, which is already a fixed sign, ruled by Uranus. And if you have any planets around 21 degrees of Taurus or exact placements at 21 degrees of Taurus, this will also affect you the most. Okay. So Gemini's, this conjunction is happening in your 12th house. Jupiter is the traditional ruler of the 12th house of Pisces. So Gemini's, you can be with this conjunction experience, experiencing sudden and even shocking intuitive insights, psychic ability enhancements, having prophetic or profound dreams. There's new ways of connecting spiritually 
this can be opening up for you that are very positive. Jupiter also rules teachers. So there can be new spiritual teachers, guides, or elders coming forward for you at this time over the course of the next few months. And you can be having big revelations by spending time alone or in meditation. The 12th house rules, you know, alone time being behind the scenes. And the 12th house is not just spirituality, but also creativity. And Jupiter and Uranus are two very creative planets. If you are a creative Gemini's, you can be innovating in your respective fields big time, even inventing new things. Also, you can be liberated by addictions or subconscious unhealthy patterns with this conjunction. So that's something very positive. And also, as this conjunction is in the sign of Taurus, some of you Geminis can start making money through spiritual, creative, or healing arts, uh, or in the healing arts field, rather. So very interesting for you Geminis. I'm wishing you a very happy, happy Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And now we move to the Cancers. So Cancers, this Uranus-Jupiter conjunction is happening in your 11th house. And the 11th house rules the Aquarius areas of life. So this is about friendships, groups, like-minded community, group associations, goals, dreams, and aspirations, as well as the future. You guys are receiving huge activation with this conjunction and very big downloads because this is the 11th house of Aquarius. Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius and is there. So you guys are stepping into the future more effortlessly than some of the other signs, which is interesting because typically cancers do like their comforts and cancer is one of the, one of the signs that rules the past. So sometimes one of the challenges for cancers is they can get stuck in the past or they can get stuck in their comforts. But for you guys having this conjunction in your 11th house, you're very open to the new Aquarian ways of doing things. So I'm very happy for you guys that you are having that. Some of you in 2024 may be inventing something new as well, becoming inventors in your respective fields. And because this conjunction is in the sign of Taurus, which rules money, finances, and abundance, you can be making more money in innovative, futuristic, and age of Aquarius ruled ways. Also, Cancers, you are being blessed with new friends, community, and group associations that are of the same vibration and wavelength. And this is very, very nice for you. Some of your new friends or groups that you're associating with may be unconventional to you, but these are positive. You can also be very success successful working online or integrating more technology, online business, social media into your professional life. Some of you may even be going viral at this time because the 11th house rules online, Uranus is in his home house. And also many of you will be inspired to do more humanitarianism work as Aquarius is the sign that rules humanitarianism, okay? So hope that resonates with you, Cancers. I'm sending lots and lots of you love your way. And now we move to the Leo, sun, moon, and rising. So first of all, Leos, we have had Uranus in Taurus since 2018. And Taurus is a fellow fixed sign in the modalities to you. So you and the other fixed signs are feeling this transit the most. And just to recap again, that's the Tauruses, Leos, Scorpios, and Aquariuses. So Leos, this is sudden life changes, innovations, and higher consciousness shifts that you have majorly been going through since 2018 and until 2026. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening in your 10th house. So this is unexpected and positive shifts, opportunities coming forward for you in work and career. Some of you Leos will be totally shifting gears into new careers, into things you may never have expected or thought of before. That can very much happen when we have Uranus transiting over the 10th house and Jupiter is expanding that. You can even be getting promotions or rewards. For some, this may be new jobs involving technology, the internet, astrology, anything considered to be alternative, 
or Age of Aquarius related jobs or jobs that are considered offbeat or weird or different, right? When we've got Jupiter in the 10th house, there is usually public recognition that we are receiving and positive social standing. So it's very good for that. Very good for you to showcase yourself publicly, to be seen publicly, to be confident and believe yourself and share your gifts through your work and career. And also the 10th house can rule our parents and elders. So your parents and elders can be going through big positive shifts and opportunities with this conjunction. So I'm sending you guys lots of love, Leos. And now we move to the Virgos. So Virgos, this conjunction overall is very positive and is happening in your ninth house, which is extremely lucky, okay? Because Jupiter is the ruler of the ninth house. So holy guacamole, this is very, very positive for you guys. Virgos, Uranus, the planet of shocks, surprises, and things happening unexpectedly can bring unexpected experiences regarding travel, higher learning, and expansion of your beliefs. You can be having life-changing travel opportunities to very unique and even bohemian places during 2024 or around the time of this conjunction. Also, the ninth house rules are higher consciousness. So this conjunction is bringing a huge activation to your higher mind, how you understand the universal laws, spirituality, and philosophy. And Virgos, at the time of this conjunction, you will have three planets transiting over your seventh house of committed relationships, including a sextile between Mars in the seventh house to this conjunction. So some of you Virgos can be literally meeting new soulmates in another country or from another country, forming long distance relationships, or perhaps even moving to a new country with a new partner. So I know all about that. For those of you who uh, may not know, <laughs> I met my partner in a uh, foreign country, and then I moved to Belgium for a few years. So yeah, that is a very big shock and surprise that most people do not expect to happen. But you know, when you find love, you have to follow it. So Virgo, some of you will be uh, meeting foreign lovers, soulmates that are from different countries, and either them making the travel to where you are to be with you or you making the travel to be where they are. Also, around the time of this conjunction, uh, March, April, May, but also throughout the rest of the year, there can be major and even sudden life changes regarding uh, travel and higher learning and your beliefs. You can be making more money as this conjunction is in the money sign of Taurus through work in the travel industry, publishing, teaching, or guiding. So sending you guys lots of love, Virgos, and now we move to the Libra, sun, moon, and risings. <laughs> Flower Nanny says, wow, sounds amazing. I can't wait to meet him. Yeah. Some of you guys, Virgos, are definitely going to be having foreign lovers or new foreign best friends. That's definitely going to be coming in for some of you guys. So, okay, Libras, you are having this conjunction happen in your eighth house. This is the Scorpio ruled areas of life. This is intensity. Okay. This is the most intense house. And this is one of the houses that rules really deep healing. So you can be having unexpected and blessed healing breakthroughs of really big issues or addictions that you may have been going through. The eighth house also rules hidden money. So you can have a nice return on an investment or random windfall of money. Uranus rules cryptocurrency, Taurus is gold, silver, cash, luxury, material items. So I'm not a financial advisor, you guys, but just saying for the Libras, this is uh, looking pretty good financially wise. And definitely there can be returns on investments that you guys are having. This is also the house of joint assets with a partner. So if so, you can have your partner's shared resources be positively expanding in new and unexpected ways. If there are issues with taxes or debts, these can be resolved during this transit for you. 
the eighth house also rules sex and intimacy and tantra so having jupiter uranus conjunct in your eighth house for you libra this is very spicy for your sex life and would be good for you to actually maybe look at uh, you know, sacred sexuality, tantra, you may be drawn to unique and different ways of pleasure and sensuality. The eighth house also deals with psychic abilities and healing gifts. So this can be expanding for many of you. And sorry, you guys, I think I'm going to sneeze one second. Sorry, you guys, <laughs> I just had to mute myself there. Um, yeah, so expansion of psychic abilities and healing gifts for you Libras. Also, the eighth house is the house of secrets, okay? So there can be secrets that perhaps come up for you at this time that actually end up liberating you uh, out of wounds, out of pain, out of trauma, because Uranus is very much about liberation and freedom, so Libras, this is going to be very powerful for you having this in your eighth house of Scorpio. And I'm sending you lots of lots of love and happy Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Okay, now for my fellow Scorpios. So Scorpios, first of all, we've had Uranus and Taurus in our opposite sign. Taurus is our opposite sign since 2018. So Scorpios, you and the other fixed signs are feeling this transit the most. And we've been having major sudden life changes, innovations, and higher consciousness shifts since 2018. And that will be going into 2026 with this transit. We're having this Jupiter Uranus conjunction happen in our seventh house. And the seventh house in astrology represents our committed relationships, marriage, work partners, contracts, commitments, and aesthetic. So these areas are all receiving a positive boost. Scorpios, whether or not you are single at the moment, <laughs> your love life is going to get a big activation with this conjunction. For single Scorpios, this can indicate new, positive, unexpected suitors coming forward. Also partners that may be very different than what you are used to. Single Scorpios can fall in fast, fall in love very fast and quickly with someone. For Scorpios in relationships, there can be a sudden quantum leap into, you know, the next level of your relationship, such as getting married, going deeper into a commitment, or an electric surge of positive energy in your current relationship. So Scorpios, Scorpios, this is what we like to hear because we're Scorpios. We're the most intense sign in astrology. We rule the underworld. We rule the shadow side and crisis. So I'm really happy for my fellow Scorpios because we're having this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in one of the lighter houses that's very much about pleasure and love and beauty and aesthetics. So Scorpios, you should be very much looking forward to this. Okay. Your work or love partners can be going through very positive life changes, as I said. And your fashion sense may be changing. Your aesthetic can be changing. Be open to blessings in relationships, Scorpios, and be open to trusting people, not just in love, but also in business and work. Also, the seventh house can represent clients. So if you work with clients, um, they can be more attracted to you at this time. I would say it's good to utilize social media, the internet, to put yourself out there. That's ruled by Uranus to attract some new people. So Scorpio is very happy to report that to you. And I'm sending you guys lots and lots of love. And I'm just going to take another sip of water. Sorry, you guys. I've been talking all day today. So I apologize. I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. Um, okay, now we move to the Sagis, Sagittarians. Sagis, this is very special for you, this conjunction, because Jupiter is your planetary ruler. So this conjunction will affect you more so than most signs. This Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening in your sixth house, and this is the house of day-to-day -day routines, work, health, organization, and pets as well. This is very positive for your work life. You may be finding more enjoyment in what you do. There can be unexpected positive work opportunities that can be happening for you at this time. 
increased income. That's what everybody likes to hear. You can also possibly be receiving a promotion and there can be unusual jobs or career paths that show up for you that you maybe never have considered before. As Uranus rules online work and technology, it would be good to start incorporating more social media, technology, cryptocurrency into uh, your work if you're not already. And some of you Saggies may be drawn to work in the technology field or in the cryptocurrency field or alternative healing modalities, which are also ruled by Uranus. Having this conjunction in your sixth house is very positive in general for any health issues. In particular, alternative healing modalities can be coming up for you unexpectedly or as good options if you are having any health issues or you have had any. And you can be coming up with new and fresh ways to keep organized and have a schedule routine that serves you, which is something that is very, very important. This is also the house that rules pets and animals. So Saggies, if you've been looking for a pet, new animal, you may be finding that magical creature around the time of this conjunction. One challenge, Saggies, is that you may be worrying more than usual. So I'm not trying to manifest that for you, but just saying that Uranus is the planet that rules hypertension, hyperactivity, the electric circuitry of our body. Sixth house of Virgo rules worry and stress. So if you are noticing that you're at times this month or around this conjunction on April 20th feeling on edge or anxious or worrying, it's probably because you got this conjunction in your sixth house. So just do some extra grounding self-care as an astrological remedy. So uh, wishing you guys a very happy conjunction, Saggies. And now we move to the Capricorns. Capricorn sun, moon, and risings. You guys are having this conjunction happen in your fifth house. This is very, very positive and fun for you guys. And I'm so excited for you guys because we're almost done Pluto in Capricorn transit. And I am a moon in Capricorn. So shout out to all my fellow Capricorns. <laughs> okay. Linda Christie, you're a Capricorn moon as well. Shout out to us. We have been going through it. And I know I've been talking about this a lot, but the Capricorns have been getting kicked in the butt ever since 2008 with Pluto in our sign. So the good news is we will have Pluto and Capricorn one last time from September 1st to November 18th. And then we are Pluto's off of our back. We are out of that transit. Thank God. Okay. But we've already started the Pluto and Aquarius transit. So it's not going to be as intense that last two months, Pluto goes back into Capricorn. So Cappies, you've got this conjunction in the fifth house, which is the fun house in astrology. This is the house of Leo. This is playfulness, fun, creativity, laughter, joy, our inner child, right? So you guys deserve this, uh, Capricorns. Make time for fun and play to get the most out of this conjunction. Some of you Capricorns are inventing new things that you will share publicly, and many of you will be in the spotlight during this time. Uranus rules new and different ways of doing things and is very creative, so you can have a lot of creative inspiration coming through in ways that you may never have experienced. This is a highly creative and positive transit for you guys. And as this conjunction is happening in the sign of Taurus, and Taurus rules money, Capricorns can start making money through creative projects or utilizing their creativity in work or career. And I was hearing as I was creating my notes, Spirit say to you, ask yourself, what would your inner child do? If you're ever feeling stuck or unsure about something, ask yourself at this time, what would your inner child do? Okay, so let your inner child be your guide at this time. Because Uranus rules social media, it's good to share your creative gifts and inspirations online. Also, the fifth house represents romance. So single Capricorns, get ready for sudden and unexpected new suitors in love coming forward. And these can be partners that may be unusual from what you normally go for. 
Also, the fifth house rules children. So this is a very positive influence for your kids, your own inner child. Uh, there can be unexpected changes or even rebelliousness going on with the kids around you. And Capricorn women, you are more fertile at this time. And some of you will be having unexpected pregnancies. So just have to tell it like it is. Okay. And if any of you Capricorn women or men have been having issues with fertility, this is good to look at alternative fertility treatments that you can have some major breakthroughs with that at this time. So sending you guys lots and lots of love, my Cappies. And now we move to the Aquarians. So Aquarians, we've had, like I've said, for the other fixed signs, Uranus in Taurus since 2018. And you and the other fixed signs have been feeling this transit the most. And it's been bringing sudden life changes, innovations, and higher consciousness shifts. And we will have, ha have this until 2026. This Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening in your fourth house. So this is positive and unexpected improvements in your home and family dynamics. Some of you will be moving at this time or over the course of the next few months, buying or selling properties. It's good to do feng shui in the home. You can be purchasing new types of homes or living situations from what you have experienced before. Remember, Aquarians, what I shared earlier, if you watched earlier in the video, uh, the earth ships and the alternative home communities that are going to be coming out more and more. Uh, family members and parents can be going through big life changes at this time where you may need to be in more of a supportive role for them. And similar to what I was saying to the Capricorn, some of you are more, well, you are more fertile at this time. You can have some unexpected pregnancies and many of you will be wanting to start families. You can be having things come up, shocking information, new information about your ancestors because the fourth house also rules our ancestors. And your emotional well being is receiving a positive boost as the fourth house rules our emotions, emotional healing, and well being. So it's looking really, really magical for you, Aquarians. Make a focus for your home, your family, your ancestors. Uh, and I think you can best utilize this transit. There's lots of positivity coming your way. Okay, and last but not least, we move to the Pisces, sun, moon, and risings, okay? So for you Pisces, this conjunction is happening in your third house, and the third house in astrology rules friendship, siblings, cousins, communication, learning, day-to-day -day gadgets, cars, so short-distance travel, among other things. Many of you Pisces will start learning new Age of Aquarian uh, information sooner than the rest of us. So you're going to be teaching us new things. You may start to get more into technology, like-minded community, community events, astrology, or Aquarian ruled areas of life, more so than you already are. You're having very accurate and inspirational downloads about the future at this time and over the course of the new next few months that can actually be quite prophetic. And you are attracting positive new friendships to you with people that are like-minded and maybe even different from friendships than you are used to regularly having. Some of you Pisces can go viral online as the third house also rules social media and sharing new information or downloads you are receiving can be very uh, positive for you. I think this is generally positive for sibling cousin relationship dynamic Pisces. So if you've been having any issues with siblings or friends, there can be a positive shift in energy in that regard. And also as this conjunction is in the sign of Taurus, you are reevaluating your values in friendship and communication and what you put time and focus into learning. Also how you make money can become more Gemini in nature as we move into the future. So sending you Pisces, lots and lots of love. And yes, Carla, that's you. So hope you guys enjoyed those predictions for each of the 12 signs for this Jupiter Uranus conjunction and my deep dive into what this means for the collective. I have so much fun 
uh, sharing this information with you guys. So I really hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, yeah, before I finish up, just want to mention again that if you'd like a personal astrology consultation with me, those are available over at the link in the description box of this video at consultations.beyondmystic.net. And I have three different reading options that I'm currently offering. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the Beyond Mystic Rumble and YouTube channel to keep up to date with all the awesome and magical content that we have coming out. So I love you guys so, so much. This is such a powerful time right now with us just having that total solar eclipse. We're now getting closer and closer to this exact Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So much magical things going on. So remember to take extra self-care of yourself. Be gentle and easy with yourself. Don't take things personally from others because as we up level and shift, you know, sometimes that can be triggering for people, especially if they've never done any kind of work before on themselves. So not taking things personally, loving yourself, appreciating yourself, radically accepting yourself for exactly where you're at, knowing that you're exactly where you're supposed to be and you're a beautiful divine being that is blessed to be here on earth at this time. It is such a blessing as we move into this age of Aquarius, as we move into this higher timeline, we are so, so blessed to be here. So I love you guys so, so much. Thank you so much for your positive comments. I will see you guys very soon and sending lots and lots of cosmic love your way. Mwah. See you next time. Bye.